Hey guys, this is the coding teacher again. I'm here to teach you how to code and uh, we're going to go ahead and continue making our customer relationship uh, manager. Uh, in this video we're going to be covering uh, inserting Angular, um, kind of like including the Angular library and getting a controller set up and, and explain a little bit about what Angular does and, um, and get this up and running. So without further ado, I actually went ahead and pre-googled the Angular CDN. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and all you got to do is basically um, Google Angular 1 CDN. Then you go to the CDN.js link and uh, it's going to default to Angular 2. So just scroll down. I believe the current version is Angular 1.5 so I just went and got the... Um, these are, must be like some kind of beta releases. I know 1.7 is down the, the coming down the pipeline as well. So I know uh, I think that Angular 1.5 is the current version so I just got the latest 1.5 that I could find and uh, I got the minified one which is so here we go here's the actual library here's angular min and everything else is kinda like plugins for angular so let's go ahead and insert that script not like that and for those of you who don't know what angular um, allows us to do is basically kind of like create um, a binding between an object in memory and um, what's displayed on the screen and that's going to become really evident but um, in essence what it allows you to do is not have to actually worry about like in the old days when we used jQuery or we used uh, plain JavaScript uh, you did some kind of calculation in your JavaScript, right? And then you had to worry about like finding an element by class name or by ID and actually changing its inner HTML content to reflect the um, the new value that you computed in, in, in your JavaScript. And, and that was very cumbersome. So it actually made it so that uh, developing large scale applications was very difficult and, and it required a lot of um, thought and a lot of organization. And Angular kind of takes care of all that when you can just create, basically inject variables directly from the controller into your HTML and Angular will update them whenever those variables change. So it's pretty great. So let's go ahead and, and actually get started creating this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and new file. It's going to be JS, app.js. And then here, in order to actually create an Angular module, you need two things. You basically need to issue this statement Angular. And, and this is a variable that exists because I inserted the Angular script already. And, you know, app.js is after this. So it, ha it has access to this exposed global variable. That's the Angular library. Angular.module. And module is what we call kind of like the Angular apps. I'm going to call it ERM. And then I got to pass in a second parameter, which is the dependencies. So for now, and I don't think we're actually going to need any dependencies for this application because it's just such a small and simple application. But if you wanted to use something like w once applications start getting bigger and you want to have multiple different screens, it's really, 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 really useful to use something like Angular Router or UI Router to actually handle and, and kind of like automatically assign different functions to run with different HTML templates. Uh, but we're not going to get into that in this video. We're just going to do a really simple controller. Um, so this is the first step in creating an Angular app. The second step is actually binding it in your HTML. So you got to bind it to an element that's actually going to kind of like enclose all the possible um, HTML elements that are going to you know be involved in this app. So I'm going to put it in the body because I need to be able to populate this div class left is what um, what's in the left hand side right here. It should be a list of list of employers, and this div class right is this whole thing right here. So I should be able to update and create employers using the class right. So I actually need to include everything. So I say ng app, and it's called erm. So now we have an Angular app, but the app does nothing. In order to actually make it do something, we need a controller. So straight off of, of this statement, um, you know, in the old days, what people used to do is like they would say var app equals like that, and then they would say app dot controller and blah blah blah. But people don't really like doing that anymore because they try to keep uh, global variables to a minimum. And what they do is they just instantiate the Angular module like this, and then they do a dot controller. Uh, straight away and then what that does is create an angular controller for this application 
and um, the controller takes two arguments kind of so first is the name of the controller let's call it main controller and the second argument is an array and you want to get in the habit of doing you, you can do it without an array but you want to get in the habit of doing it with an array because from what I've seen that's the most accepted current convention uh, and the array is meant to have like a list of things number like first a bunch of strings that are the names of the dependencies of this controller um, so in this case we're just going to use the scope construct and uh, then the last element of the array is always the actual function that takes in all of these dependencies as parameters and actually it represents the controller function scope and there we go so in here we can just um, say main controller is running and now that we have this controller we have to bind it somewhere at the HTML same type of thinking as an ng app you have to bind it at a, at a and an element that actually encloses all the HTML elements that you want to be able to control with this controller. So we're going to do it right here. ng controller equals um, main controller. And that's basically all it takes to set up an Angular application that does nothing. So that's the initial setup that we need. We need to instantiate an Angular module and then we need to add a controller to it. And then we need to go in the HTML and specify where those are uh, like the application and the controller are going to glue themselves to. And you could note that this ng app could be at a higher, I, I believe it could be in the HTML tag, but uh, the point that I want to make is that the ng app and ng controller do not need to be in the same HTML elements. Um, so that's one thing that uh, we might actually undo later on, but uh, for now, this should be fine. Um, and again, just a recap of the steps, you Google the Angular CDN, you insert it as a script, and then you create a link to your own script. In your own script, you have to instantiate a module, an Angular application, this is how you do it. Create a controller for it, this is how you do it. And then bind them to an HTML using an HTML element using the uh, ng app directive and the ng controller directive. So let's actually go ahead and see this in action. There we go, main controller is running. So. That's it for this episode. I hope that was informative. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. In the next episode, we're going to be um, actually creating what's called a service. We're going to be talking about what services are. We're going to create a service to actually pull the employers from the back end and display them on the screen.